So, Chinese textbooks, and how many should you use to study anyway? Hey, we're going to talk about that today with an article from Hacking Chinese. By the way, my name is Kuei Zhou. If we don't know each other, I'm a creator here at elementarychinese.com, helping you learn the everyday Chinese you need to get what you want. This is a live stream. If you're watching on the replay, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching. Uh, by the way, let's see if we could switch this over here. This is sponsored by SpeakEverydayChinese.com, my new website to help you learn just the good Chinese that you need to communicate what you want, especially if you're coming to China. So Hacking Chinese is created by this guy called Ola Linga. If you haven't been to his website, Hacking Chinese is super good. And he's a Swedish guy who uh, has a master's in teaching Chinese and has been writing articles about how to learn Chinese now for years. I highly recommend you head over there. We're gonna to talk today about a specific article that he wrote, and that article, article that he wrote, and that article was called, How Many Books Should You Use to Study? How many books should you use to study Chinese? Actually, sorry, his article was called this, Why You Should Use More Than One Chinese Textbook. And he says some things that are what I would say controversial. I don't know if I agree with all of them, but since it's a live Tuesday, we're just gonna hang out and talk about these. So, I like what he says in the beginning of this article, which is textbooks teach you how to find your way around without getting lost. If you know that's true, leave a comment that said true, right? And that's the thing, when you come over to China, especially when like I first got to China, I didn't know what to learn. And so textbooks helped me get around. They, they literally gave me a roadmap or a path on what to learn. This is a live stream, so you can leave a comment and I'll be responding to the comments. So another thing he says in his article is that um, the authors have chosen vocabulary that they think is best for the students. Now that's good and bad. If you trust an author to choose the best vocabulary for you, hooray, great, then you can rest at ease. But here's the thing, who are these authors? If you've been here in China, you know that like our Chinese teachers because their culture is different, they see the world through a different lens than like maybe we do as Westerners learning Chinese. And the vocabulary that they choose might not be the ones that we see as important to us in everyday life. Also, for better and for, for good and for worse, for better and for bad, uh, till death do us part, authors of Chinese books, they have PhDs and they have masters, right? But they curate these words to make the most idea selection. And they're also competing with each other. Now, does that all have to do with what we need day in and day out? Maybe, but maybe not. So, Ali Linga's point about authors having, authors choosing the best vocabulary that is suitable for students, well, well. Okay, his next point. Textbooks explain the language. Sorry, he has a really, a really interesting analogy that textbooks are like, <clears throat> language learning is like mapping a foreign land. So if language is a foreign land and vocabulary or topics are different territories, then the textbook maps that out for you, right? The textbook helps you navigate that. I love this because so many people ask me, well, how come you can say it multiple ways? Or I'll give them an answer. They'll say, well, how do you say, uh, I don't know, let's roll up the window in a taxi cab because we're talking about that in my WeChat group. And I'll say, oh, that's a chuanghu guan shang or chuanghu da shang, right? And then they'll say, oh, why are other Chinese people saying it this way? Or all oh, my Chinese friends that said that there's another way to say it. And I'm like, well, that's because of all Alinga's example. It's like mapping a foreign land. Okay, so that means then if you get a topic or even a phrase that sends you in one direction, but this is territory, you can go multiple places, right? Just because I go over here, out there, I can get to that little island with the super nice houses from two different, maybe two different roads and maybe even a boat, which is like a third way, okay? So my point is that textbooks will guide you there. Now, he says you should have more than one, right? 
more than one guide never hurts. If you go to the, the Yangtze River, right, you might see something different on a different tour. Uh, what else does he say in this article? Hmm, yeah, I like that analogy. I'm gonna drop the link to his article on Hacking Chinese down below in the descriptions. It'll be there by the time the replay comes around, so head back there and get it. Right now it's not there, I'm so sorry. Uh, by the way, if you want to know any of the other books I've reviewed, my favorite, or uh, this is a new one I haven't reviewed, but it's there for an example, head down to the descriptions below and you can find links to other book reviews and also my website where I review books. Additional textbooks solidify your fundamental knowledge of Chinese, and I cannot agree with that more. In the beginning, hey, Rockerman German, what's up? In the beginning, you need a fundamental knowledge of Chinese, that basic grammar, those basic vocabulary, uh, whether or not they're the most suitable for your day-to-day -day life, still, you need them, right? You need them. And Here's uh, something that he says. The vocabulary is chosen by different authors with slightly different perspectives, leading to another set of words somebody thinks you really should know. There you go. It's good, right? A guide, a recommendation is good, but not always that good. Now here's something he says that I don't really agree with, but man, Allah, he's a genius. I still don't really agree with this though. He says the alternative would be to choose words that you encounter in daily life. What do you think? He says there's a problem with that. The words might be far from universal, as in they're locally used words, or just by the person that you're talking to, and the words might be un uncommon. They might be common for you because you found it in your day-to-day -day life, but they might actually not be used anywhere else in China. Or the words might be common, like to describe certain clothes, but not very useful. Okay. All right, but I totally think you should learn words from your everyday life because you only want you. Your only everyday life, Rock, I'm gonna to get to your question in a quick moment, hang in there. Your, your everyday life is your life. So if you learn the words that are useful for your everyday life, if you're here in China, then that's gonna help you in the day to day and you're gonna feel how, that you're gonna feel good and that you're learning and thriving here in China. So should you learn the words from everyday life? Alalinga says no, probably do uh, or go by the books, right? These textbooks that are your guide. I say yes, maybe it's a bit of both. Why don't you head to his article down below and go read it for yourself and make an educated decision. Um, here's the thing. He also talks about in his article that textbooks give you, give you good vocabulary, okay? and that you should use multiple ones. And the good thing about a textbook is that they come in different levels. So if I choose three different textbooks that are the beginner level, because I'm a beginner, then I should get a nice wider variety of vocabulary. And that, that Allah, that is genius. I like you for saying that Allah. So um, let me head over and we're gonna do some Q and A now. If you like this video, like it, okay? Q and A time, let me go to my page elementary Chinese on YouTube so I can see your questions in the live chat. In the meantime, leave a comment if you're watching on the replay. Do you think you should learn everyday words or do you think that you should learn words that the book, Chinese books say you should learn? Which is it? What do you think? Also share this video out. Come on, share this live stream out. Hit that share button and share it out with a friend. Share it out on social media. Share it out uh, on Facebook. Share it to other YouTube friends. Let people learn. You use YouTube. Okay, what's up? We're in the comments right now. Ah, let's see, Rock, your question. You use Chinese Made Easy by Martin Simmons. Rock, come back on after this live stream ends and drop that into the comments. I've never heard of that. I'm gonna look at it and see what's up with that. But uh, how do you like it? Could you leave a few comments? Like, have you used any of the other books like Chinese, New Chinese Practical Reader, Integrated Chinese, Discover China? Thanks, Rock. I have not read through it, but I think I'd like to. Alex from North Carolina, what's up? 
currently using the textbooks Integrated Chinese Level 1 Part 1 and Chinese for Dummies. I don't know if those are too great for learning. Well, it's a good thing that you talked about Chinese for Dummies because I have it right here. And you know what? I don't really like Chinese for Dummies only because... I just saw, oh, look at that, it just turns me, oh, you can't even read it. Here, let me flip the camera around over here so you can see the right way. I don't know, that presentation, first of all, does it have audios? Audio. If you're going to use a book, make sure it has audio. And Chinese for Dummies does have audio, so that's good. But man, for me, this presentation, the crowded text, just says, nah. I kind of want to throw up. So I'm sorry, Chinese for Dummies, but there's a reason why I'm not actually going to make a video review of Chinese for Dummies, and that's that reason. I just can't get through it. Integrated Chinese is my favorite textbook, and I'm glad you're using it. And it has audio, which you can get in MP3s from the website. After you buy the book, you'll have a little code to get that audio. Uh, I mean, it's a phenomenal textbook. Phenomenal, and it's adopted by tons of high schools and colleges uh, in the US. This is version, this is the third edition, fourth edition. Uh, the link of my actual review for Integrated Chinese is down below. So anyway, Alex, the book that you're learning with, which one excites you most? Can you like drop a comment back in the live chat? Which one are you excited about the most? Honestly, like which of those two? Use that the most, okay? But as far as supplementing vocabulary, if you have the drive to push through, say, kind of like a boring or a more boring <laughs> how do you say, book, then, yeah, I mean, a different book is still a different set of vocabulary, so why not? For me, I have the luxury, well, I'm not really studying Chinese with books anymore, but I have the luxury of choosing from, like, lots of different books. But you know what? Multiple, one is better than two. Two is better than one. Yeah. <laughs> Brooker Cole, you are brand new. Where do you begin? Brooker Cole, thanks. Where do you live at? You live in China or you live in the US? I gotta know that. Where do you begin? Get a, okay, first of all, on my channel, I did a video like the three ways and I'm posing like this, like the three ways to learn Chinese, three factors to combine. Brooker, go watch that video. Where you begin is uh, with the textbook that has audio. Just choose one. Uh, integrated Chinese, this guy is super expensive, like $60. Uh, living language Mandarin Chinese has like beginner, intermediate, and advanced inside of it. This is like $30. Uh, choose a book with audio and start reading out loud with that audio right away, Brooker. You also want to get your pronunciation sounds and your tones. Uh, practice those. Um, so that's where you would start. And I, I recommend that you also uh, hop onto WeChat if you don't have WeChat. Brooker, did you say you're here in China yet? Got to go to work. Hey, Roger. Hey, Rod, hey, Rock German. See you later. I'm in need for travel. Ha <laughs> ha. Come back. Yeah, come back and watch the replay. So I would start there, Brooker. Um, I would also get a real life Chinese partner. If you're in the US, go to your local college, university, community college, find someone. You know, you could volunteer at. Uh, say, the Office for International Students and uh, kind of adopt a Chinese student and do a language exchange. If you're here in China, go out on the street and find somebody, you know, or on WeChat with a friend. But get somebody who you can talk to in real life. That way, when you are reading the book and learning vocabulary from the book, you can also get that real life exchange and ask them questions like, well, here's what the book says. What do you really say? That's what I love to ask. Um, if you're watching, now, because you didn't come in early, we're looking at this video or this article written by Ole Linga, and the quest, this article is called You Should Use More Than One Chinese Textbook. Hacking Chinese, get to that website. This guy, he's more written format, okay? Uh, I'm not crazy about written, which is why if you go to my website, you won't see many articles, because I can't write. Um, but he writes, uh, he has his master's in teaching English, teaching Mandarin. He's quite advanced, and his articles are on point. Uh, wait till the replay, and I'll put a link to his articles below. So where is my YouTube video? What else can we see here? You live in Guam.
Brooker or Booker. Sorry, I kept saying Brooker. Booker, you live in Guam. Just get a book then. I'm sure they have a bookstore that has Chinese books. Otherwise, Guam, since it's a, it's technically a U.S. territory, right? But it's its own country. I don't know the status of Guam. I should. Don't get upset. But maybe Amazon ships there. In which case, drop down to the descriptions below. Uh, look at one of the book reviews I did for Integrated Chinese and ship that book over to yourself in Guam. Are there Chinese folks in Guam? Can you find a language exchange partner? Sorry, I'm still getting over a cold. What are your other questions? Leave those in the live chat now. But it, absolutely, I would... I, I believe what Alalinga says. You should get uh, multiple Chinese books. I think that's good. I think you need to balance it with real life practice. If you're not in China, then real life practice or real life everyday words could be from somebody on Hello Talk. That's a decent app uh, to meet Chinese tutors. Also, it is a territory. Yes. Uh, it it also is. You could use WeChat, which is a Chinese app. So lots of Chinese people there. You could look for italki, i t a l k i dot com. They can hook you up with a Chinese tutor. Uh, oh, you should go to my Instagram. YouTube right now is all about strategy, though I will be posting language videos on YouTube soon enough. Uh, you should go to my Instagram because on there, I got lots of videos, lots of videos about day-to-day -day Chinese. Um, they're pretty funny because I like to be goofy and silly, but they're going to help you. I'm, I'm going to my Instagram now. Oh, you can't see it because it's backwards. This backwards video is so messed up. Uh, oh, you can practice your tones in my Instagram stories. Like, literally, you get to choose. Uh, well, let's close this out. Let's go to home. There we go. Oh, this isn't me. That's my personal account. Oh, you got to see my babies. There, elementary Chinese on Instagram. So you can go there and watch tons of videos. If you're in China, they make sense. If you're not in China, they don't make sense so well because... At any rate, they're not like, it's good if you're in China. It's good if you're in China. You enjoy my Instagram, my weekend of wanderlust. Thank you. Tell me your name again. I should remember it. At any rate, I have said all I need to say. So since there's like nine of you watching, let's hang out for 10 more seconds. If there's another question, there is. All right. Way to go. We're going to hang out. James Cook, you've been around this channel for a long time. Time, a long time. Priscilla, Priscilla, you're in my WeChat group. I'm so sorry. I love the integrated Chinese. We'll do books one, two, three, and four. And then more books from that publishing house. Uh, also, James, could you drop in a comment in the replay? I know you usually comment on the videos, and I love you for that. Uh, what are the other books that are worthwhile from that publishing house? Because... I, I say, I, the only reason I know about Integrated Chinese is because my professor, who was this lady, Nian Ping B, she's like right there. This lady's awesome, and she taught me in college. Phenomenal lady, but she's like this little short Chinese, like Taiwanese lady with this intense glare, and she would make her students cry. Not because she was mean, but because she was very demanding. Like if you came to her class unprepared and didn't do the homework that you should have done, she would call you out and she would make you stand like, she would randomly pick people to stand in front of the classroom and kind of act out or answer questions from the book that was in homework. And if you didn't know, she would be like, why did you not study? Why did you not do your homework? And normally you get off the hook when you don't know anything, right? But she would leave you up there and, uh, I'll never forget, she was teaching the phrase fang de xia and fang bu xia. Fang de xia means you can fit something into a space or on somewhere, and fang bu xia is you can't fit it in there, right? And so to teach us this, we, like, we didn't really know what was going on, but 
she was saying in Chinese, like, uh, and we were like, ah, what? and then she had like somebody, uh, one of the class, one of the students climb up on the table. Um, and then she kept asking this question. And it didn't take us but like, I don't know, three students up on the table to be like, Fang de xia, fang de xia, you know, like, so she would keep asking if, uh, you know, fang bu xia or fang de xia, and then we were like, fang de xia, we got like six students up there, and finally, she asked like if the teacher could fit up on the table, and then she got up there, and like, she was just full of like very interactive ways, but man, she was hard, and not harsh, loving, because at the end of the semester, like, this woman cried, like, she was like telling us that she wants us to like, go deeper into Chinese and hopefully go and stay abroad and just keep pursuing our studies. And she was like tearing up and then she started crying. And then people in the class started crying because she gave her all, like the harshest, most strict Chinese teacher I ever had, but then truly caring. And so that's why I talk about her books because she's one of the authors and there's a reason that this integrated Chinese book is it's better than the rest of the books, honestly. If you know a book that's better than Integrated Chinese, tell me in the comments. But you gotta tell me why. Like, I wanna see presentation, you know? Like, this one's full in color, but the, at least in the fourth edition, even the examples are current, you know? So anyway, any rate, uh, enough about that. I see another question right here. Would you suggest, Priscilla, my weekend wanderlust, would you suggest asking a Chinese person to be a language buddy, even though they don't have a good English level? Absolutely, if you want to struggle through learning Chinese. In the very, very beginning, like riding a bike with training wheels, maybe you need a Chinese language buddy who can speak English, but Priscilla, I know you know, because you're here in China, most of the Chinese people you will find, especially if you're a student, but anyway, that can speak English, they really wanna learn. Like many haven't even been outside of China yet as of this recording in the video, you know? And so the ones that can speak English, think about how hard it was for you to learn Chinese before you came to China, right? So the Chinese that can speak English pretty well, that have never left the country, man, they are diligent. And so they tend to like dominate the conversation and you ain't gonna study no Chinese. That being said, in the very beginning, it's like having training wheels on a bike and you might need that extra help. Uh, if you are really adventurous, or maybe you have two language partners, your second one could be someone who doesn't speak Chinese. If you're intermediate or above, definitely, you don't want to speak Chinese uh, with your language partner. Because here's the problem. In the beginning, it's okay to learn English for Chinese words, but you don't want to continue to swap the languages back and forth in your mind as you get more advanced. Like when I became intermediate, I studied for two years in Beijing. And once I got past the beginning level, I probably started like high beginning, low intermediate. Once I got up there, I realized I can't describe things I need to say in Chinese. And that's a problem. And that problem can be fixed if you start to learn or if you interact more with Chinese people. So there's my opinion. Uh, can I link apps I would recommend in the description, Alex? Shoot, I don't know how to do that. Uh, but there's Duolingo, that's like one that everybody uses. I just type that now in the live chat. Uh, Drops is the app, it might be called Language Drops. That's cool. Um, everybody loves to learn apps. I kinda, I kinda hate on apps a little. I don't want you to only be using an app to learn the language. Um, regardless, here are the apps that I have on my phone. Oh, my lips are chapped. Nasty. Here are the apps I have on my phone for learning a language. Uh, these are the ones I've gone into. I've definitely, I got drops because the vo amount of vocabulary in drops is staggering. Uh, it doesn't teach the language per se, um, just vocabulary. But uh, obviously I recommend The Economist because you know, intelligence. But Duolingo, <laughs> Chinese skill and hello Chinese. Those apps are all right, you know. Um, I, I, tell, I tell you guys, or I said before, I didn't learn Chinese, excuse me, with an app because I was here in like 2002 uh, to 2004 studying Chinese. Like they didn't even have cell phones back then. They had a cell phone, but it sucked, right? Um, so I didn't have apps. 
So now I don't necessarily use apps to learn Chinese. Uh, but then again, taking what that guy Alalinga said on the website, like why you should use more than one Chinese textbook, well, use more than one Chinese app for the reasons that we talked about at the beginning of this live stream. Don't just get stuck on one, but plow through the Chinese app. Here's what I want you to do. If you use a textbook or an app, don't get stuck. Like, especially in the beginning, you just gotta churn through and get that material coming in, you know, and get more and more and more and more and see it in more and more contexts. Um, there is a book. I can't link it in the descriptions right now. It's the first book I read about how to learn any language, and it talked about combining multiple sources. And I think this book was old school, old school. But it talked about how uh, you could find a newspaper plus a textbook and someone to practice with. And the newspaper, you would have to start just plowing through that, underlining every word you didn't understand and looking it up. Like, yeah, this was an old school approach. Not easy. Um, but then the textbook you had would reinforce some of the things that you found in the newspaper follow. It would be like this multiple touches. Like I talk about in my training, English as a second language. Well, I'm also certified to teach Chinese from grade one to 12 in the US, but ESL is what I did here in China. And they talk about seven to 23 exposures it's gonna take you to learn um, a language. So you get exposed to words in different ways and it should help your learning. I'm looking at the live chat right now. Hmm. Hello Chinese is good so far, but you haven't turned tail yet. What does turn tail mean? Priscilla is Wanderlust. Agatha Christie, what's your name again? Sorry, please tell me your name again. Uh, have you used Lingo Deer? Lingo Deer? Should I use Lingo Deer? Let me, let me get Lingo Deer, why not? Yeah, sure. Lingo Deer. I'm gonna write that down right now. Lingo, Lingo Deer, look. See, Lingo Deer, I wrote that down. I will look it up and we'll see what's going on. Uh, this is like my passion project because I got good by reading along with books, audiobooks. I put in hours and you guys know that I teach everyday Chinese because lots of the people like in my WeChat group and stuff, they, they're here teaching in China and they're too busy to learn in a classroom where they can't commute. So really what I specialize in is, like my superpower is hearing Chinese folks all around me say what they're saying and then I just like grab that word or that phrase and then I use it again in like the same situation and I get really good results with that. You know, like I say fluency is gauged by how well and how quickly are the people you're talking to responding to you without being like, oh, oh what are you saying, huh, you know? And so like my mission was just to make videos of me in everyday circumstances and then also use and teach everyday phrases so that, hear, hear me out here, if you're working in China, how many situations do you experience usually, right? See, your life is like the same. On the way to work, however you commute, in cabs, getting food, so I'm like, if because you're an adult, you can memorize phrases. Therefore, in situations that you experience the most, the phrases you memorize will get reinforced the most. And that makes you feel good about life, which is important because like if you're working here, you wanna run a marathon and you're not gonna prepare for a marathon like you would a sprint. Like I feel like doing the apps is kinda of like sprinting, but keeping your motivation high and feeling good about your Chinese life or mastery, so to speak, that's like the marathon, okay? and. So for me and others, like helping you with the day-to-day -day language you need to communicate the most in the situations you experience the most, that's where it's at. And so that's what I do on speakeverydaychinese.com. I'm uploading new videos there every week. It is my course, so I put my work into it. And also, all those videos I made on Instagram will be there. Plus, I'm working on audio. Like I said, what really did it for me, and hear me now, if you want to know how to improve your pronunciation, you must get audio with your book. Uh, I don't care what book it is, get audio and read along 
with the audio. James Cook, watch TV programs. Like, how good or how bad are authentic? Those are amazing. Um, I would watch, I don't know the names of TV shows. Here, give me a moment. Hang on. There's, I've watched several uh, different TV shows. I'm gonna drop the Chinese here, then go to yoku.com and look these up, yoku.com. See, see what I do for you guys? If you're here live, you benefiting. Um, if you're here on the replay, it's kind of good that you got here. Go to yoku.com and look up. Uh, this one is called Luo Hun Shudai. Uh, I'll just type the opinion, okay? No tones. Luo, Luo Hun Shudai. That is called Naked Wedding. And before you perverts get crazy, uh, a naked wedding in Chinese is when you get married, but the husband doesn't have a job, a car, or a house. That is called a luohun. Um, that's a Beijing s season. Why do Chinese TV shows never have more than one season? Like, at least the good ones? I don't know, but it's a Beijing one. Uh, so lots of Beijing dialect, if that's your thing. Um, also, there's uh, the huma maoba, huma maoba. Really, like this video if it's good for you. Like, you're watching live, there's like 10 of you. Like it! And if you can't like or participate in the chat, that's probably because you don't follow me. So follow me right now. Shoot. Uh, Huma Maba, it's like Tiger Mom, Cat Dad. And uh, do you guys remember that dance from back in the day, the Cat Daddy? <laughs> uh, that one. <clears throat> You know Chinese families are all about the kid and their education, and that one is the mom and dad end up selling like their super nice house. Mom has, you know, like, she makes all the money. The dad has an okay job reviewing video games, but they sell their super nice house to move to this expensive small apartment in Shanghai. It's super expensive because it's right near a school, and so they have to get zoning for their daughter to go to school, and all the stuff that happens around their life. Uh, that's another show that's easy to understand. It's pretty entertaining. There's another one that's a little harder, Huan Le Song, a little harder to understand. Uh, it's about these, like, I think there's four girls, they move to the big city, they're in an apartment, you know, they meet, their, or there's three girls that move to a big city, you know, the big city, and then they're in an apartment and there's this rich girl next door, and they all become friends, and it's like kind of just chronicles their day-to-day, -day, their different lives and the different challenges they have. Uh, that one is a more of a recent one. Uh, for sure, though, Mr. Cook, uh, you should definitely watch. I do it all. Textbooks. Practice in real life with Chinese friends. Um, watching TV shows if you can. Like, TV shows always have... Does it matter to have a Taiwanese accent or mainland? Nope. Nah. Not in the beginning. That's like a Chinese person asking me, does it matter if I have a British accent or an American accent. No, uh-uh. As long as you speak, who cares? Especially in the beginning, you know? Like, there are different vocabulary used in Taiwan that there are in mainland China, but not so many. And if you're good enough to understand the myriad of expressions that are different in Taiwan and the mainland, then you don't need to ask that question anyway, because you're also good enough to turn your accent off and on. Um, Right? Also, what does that mean? Taiwanese accent or mainland? I lived in Xiamen, which is an island in the south of China. Like, so people back in the day, if you don't know the history from in Fujian province, you know, like uh, the Kuomintang or that Democratic Party that kind of got chased out by the communists uh, down into Taiwan, but the languages they speak natively, which is what gives them their accent, or originally gave them their accent, uh, would be Taiwanese, which is called Hakka, and I believe, um, so they call it Taiyu, right? And there's other one that's, uh, and Taiyu is like what they speak in, it's Kejiahua on mainland, and they speak it in Longyan, which is an area, city area, right in Fujian province. And then there's also Minanhua, which is spoken by the Minan people in the Fujian province, like also in Xiamen. And so on the island of Taiwan, because all the people from Taiwan originally came from up there, uh, they speak those languages and it gives them the accent. So even I have quote unquote 
kind of a Taiwanese accent because I spent five years in Xiamen. And so lots of people up here can be like, oh, you kind of have like an accent from the South. But then before that, I spent two years in Beijing, which is why people in the South would be like, oh, you kind of have an accent from the North. And so accents don't really matter so much. Uh, it's a long answer to that. Oh, you guys are keeping all the questions coming. This is the best live ever. Love you for hanging out with me. Uh, hopefully I'm bringing value to you. Lingo Deer is pretty awesome. All right, I haven't left yet, okay. Uh, what else we got here, what are you guys saying? I live in Boston, yo sneeze, what's up yo sneeze? Um, and all the Chinese here speak Cantonese, but you want to learn Mandarin. Look, yo sneeze. Because of the visa issues in China and meaning uh, Hong Kong was kind of like the free land or at least a British colony, all over the world for the time being, you will see Chinese people, and they generally tend to be from, or Cantonese speaking, because they're the ones that could travel the world in the beginning. Uh, so if you need to find Mandarin speaking folks, head to your, buffering, buffering, I'm live again, we back! If you hug on, way to hang in there. See, even though I use a really good VPN, uh, because let's be honest, we're in China, most VPNs won't even let you live stream, okay? But like my VPN is uh, Astral. Actually, if you want to support me because you're switching VPNs, go down in my link because or in the descriptions because there's like an affiliate link to Astral. Um, and yeah, just cut off. But then again, like honestly, this is a VPN I use for streaming on my phone, and it's pretty money um, compared to all of those ones. It's like eight ish dollars a month, and it holds its own. That being said, lots of folks over here use ExpressVPN. But anyway, I like Astral, and I use it. And if you want to support me and what I'm doing, use that affiliate link down there in the descriptions. Um, sorry, VPN issues, but this is China. I mean, we all got VPN issues. We all need VPNs to connect to the internet. The Martin Simmons Chinese Made Easy is really good. It comes with a CD. Everyone you would learn appears 10 times. Oh! Oh, you rock! I heard about that. Let me write this down, too. I heard about that book. It's written by a guy who's not Chinese, and he, like, on purpose shows up the words, and then they kind of start appearing in further uh, texts and chapters at reduced frequency, right? Like, oh, and they, repl they repl the remove the pinion gradually. Yeah, thanks. I have always, but that's an old book, isn't it? It's not in circulation. Any more? Martin Simmons, Chinese, made easy. Done. All right. Done, 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 done. done. Uh, yeah, thanks for that book recommendation. Hey, since you guys are kind of hanging out with me right now, let me show you what I got over here. Uh, this one, I haven't done a review on my channel yet, but it seems good. It has no characters in it. It has audio, though, so BBC Talk. Um, I'll drop a link to that in the descriptions for the replay. I did, like, a live review with this girl named Arden of this book. It's called Easy Peasy if you're in the UK. Like, this book... It's like a phrase book plus or a textbook light, you know? Like, look, it's set up like a textbook, but it has audio. And these phrases are all, like, quite useful. Um, so, and I like the colors. I'm a sucker for pretty, pretty colors. And so, um, yeah, look at that. Like, it's, it's good. So that one is there. If you're a little more advanced and you can find this, this book... Like, remember I talked about all these, like, educated PhD holders and stuff, like, and how they're making Chinese books, so usually, like, the grammar could be a bit more dry, and all the grammar has to be proper, and the vocabulary is highly curated. Well, this book proves all that wrong, but I haven't been able to find it many places. Um, I found this in a Chinese bookstore here in China, but the phrases in here, it really is the way they communicate. It's like somebody did what I do on Instagram and my like life philosophy of basically asking Chinese people what they say and how and listening to how they really say stuff 
and then put it in a book. So good luck if you can find that. I don't even have an Amazon link to that because I don't think it's on Amazon. And since you guys are watching so late into this deal, the whole thing with Amazon is like, I do reviews and I have an Amazon link. And that's another way to support me because if you end up getting a book through that link, Amazon shares a little bit of the cost with me, right? And it actually doesn't matter if you get a book that I linked to or not. You could like just click on one of my Amazon links before you do your Christmas shopping and Amazon shares like some of that cost with me. And of course yeah, you still get the same good Amazon prices. But since you guys are hanging out with me and I'm just sharing stuff with you, I thought I'd tell you that is one of the ways I support myself as I make all these videos. Um, this is my business. I quit my daytime job to pursue my passion. This is one that I got. I haven't reviewed it yet. It's Chinese characters. And I'm not super excited about Chinese characters, honestly. Um, but some people are, so I figured I'd review that one. Uh, this is one you can get in China. That's actually a solid textbook. It's kind of like, it's not super exciting. Um, you know, this is a level five. This is one my wife uses. Uh, but it's good. If you get it in China, though, it's going to be in Chinese. If you get it in the U.S. or off of Amazon, then all the instructions are in English. Uh, FYI. And that's kind of all I got. Put this up there. Ba -da -ba, Chinesey. These books are pretty for learning Chinese characters, but the author, I keep reaching out to her. She won't talk to me for some reason. I wanted her to do like a guest review on YouTube. Um, the way we communicate it. Just found it on Amazon? Seriously? And they actually have it in stock, Rock? Well, shoot. Um, did you click through one of my links? <laughs> no, really, I'm serious about that. Hey, click on one of the links in the descriptions first that goes to Amazon and then get that book the way we communicate. Like that is a solid, it's not a beginner book, it's just phrases. <clears throat> but here, let me look inside of it so you can see. But it's, it's really good. Like really, 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 it's, it's really good. Like here, again, it's not big on the presentation, but really, if you want to be able to, if you value just kind of saying phrases the way Chinese people talk, things are worded exactly like that. Like, like it's, this is how Chinese people talk. And this is an intermediate or advanced struggle because the way we learn in Chinese books is not how Chinese people communicate day in, day out. They have like this much more concise, kind of uh, simple way of communicating where lots of the flowery grammar and language is kind of dropped and they just, they just communicate. Excuse me. Um, and I wish I had an example for you, but I, I'm not thinking of examples. Like... Uh, I'm sorry. I've been talking for like 45 minutes. They have one left. So do I recommend taking a class? Booker, if you're in Guam, yeah, take a class. Because the class will give you structure. And so if you like have a day job and you have the time actually to take a class, take a class because it will take you from point A to point B or C or D. And for all of these cool apps and books that we can get on our own, like, it's hard to finish those. Like, I wish I was self-disciplined. If I was self-disciplined, I would be editing 15 hours a day and there would be way more videos. But there's not, because self-discipline is hard. So if you're self-disciplined, you don't need a class to learn. But if you're like real people like me, a class will help you. It'll get you from point A to point B and then you'll have some good foundation and then you can build on top of that foundation. But otherwise, studying on your own is difficult. It takes a lot of motivation. Yeah, see, Rock takes classes. It's important. Online class. I mean, look, it comes down to, why am I calling you Alex? Isn't your name Nicole? So sorry, I forget. You're from Carolina, though. Um, they're the same. Take an online class. 
if it's a paced class, like through a university, then great, you have that built-in structure. If it's one where you have to pace yourself through the courses or through like the little chapters, then you gotta do it yourself. And again, do you have the self-discipline to do it? You know, which link? Yeah, click any link, Rock. You can click any link, any of my Amazon links are good if you're just looking to support me. Click any Amazon link before you make any random purchase in the future. Oh. Honestly, shoot. I mean, if, if you guys care, this is very selfish of me, but at the same time, like, if you guys care, take one of my Amazon links and just copy it to your notes on your phone. Like, if you randomly get Amazon stuff in the future, I would appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Now, back to stuff that matters for you. Alex or Glow is fine. Yeah, like, at online classes, I, those, are, those are fine. Like, I wish I could recommend one. Like, I really recommend Chinese Pod, but it's not an online course. It is online. Do you mean online classes that follow a book and pace you through, or just an online resource that you pay monthly for? In which case, I don't think there's better than Chinese Pod. But the trick is, and the reason books are good is because while they're curated, they push you through a system. If you go on somewhere like Chinese Pod, maybe they have a, I haven't been on there recently, maybe they have a playlist of courses or lessons that you can go through to learn, but otherwise, like your Chinese is all over the place, you know? And so, in something like Chinese Pod, which has lessons for everything, everything, right? But you have to know in your mind what direction you want to go. Otherwise, you will get lost in everything and learning random things, and uh, it might not work for you. Like, my course, speakeverydaychinese.com, like self promo, is good, but it's not good if you're, it's best if you're in China. Because again, like my personal focus is language for everyday life, okay? So if you're in China, struggling to take taxis and deities, then like my course is very narrowly focused on the situations that expats in China experience the most. So that's good, but even my course is not like going to build up your Mandarin in a structured way with successive units that add systematically vocabulary on there. No, 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 no. I'm just taking situations that I experience in day-to-day -day life and responding to questions from people in my paid WeChat group. They experience situations in day-to-day -day life. I'm just responding to those with the phrases that I've heard and that I use that get the results. So like, I guess, Taking online courses is fine, but you have to be able to really set. It's like, it's like going out on the ocean. You can take a cruise, and that cruise will get you to where it's going, and you get all your meals taken care of, you know? Or you can hop on your own sailboat. You might experience a more fulfilling experience, but you better know how to sail yourself, right? And you better pack your own lunch. You follow me? Like, you have to make sure and put it more together when you do it yourself online. Well, I mean, try, like, try. Look, look, Glow, try. Like, what could it hurt? Like these online courses, like mine is like $8 a month, okay? Uh, Chinese Pod is like, I think, 12 or $14 a month. Have any of you guys used Chinese Pod? Uh, I mean, try. Like, $20 is not going to break the bank. I hope not. If it is, well, this isn't like a financial advice thing, but I do read lots of personal finance books. But, you know, just try an online course. See what happens. Uh, you have to fill out how you study best. Like, so try an app, try an online course, try learning with somebody on HelloTalk or italki. Like, just try, 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 try everything, you know? Be like a sponge. Go for it. Uh, I think we need to finish. You know why? There's not another question. I'm going to go into my usual finishing, finishing video move <laughs> because my nose is stuffed up and I need to rest. I've been talking a long time, but thank you for hanging out with me and thank you for liking this video and you guys are the best. And <coughs> if you're a beginner, there's a video right here, like my best ways to learn Chinese 
for beginners, click or tap the screen right there. Otherwise, another video about elementary Chinese down at the bottom. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Your time is valuable. Hopefully I got value for you. Like this video if I did. All the best and goodbye.